All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Houston Cardinals Hour. We're here with some of the coaches of the Houston Cardinals. We're going to start off right now with Mr. Chris Borkins. Chris, getting ready to come into the season right now. Preseason game this week versus the Houston, the Texas Wolverines, the GCFA Super Bowl champions. What, 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 what can we plan to see from the Cardinals? Well, what we're going to see is a, a great defensive game, a great offensive game, a total package. So okay. We're coming to get them. What did you learn from the last game you played against the Texas Coast? The defense looked pretty good, and I know you're over the defense this year. So, uh, how was, was you impressed? Yeah, we played We played a little sloppy, but we picked the games up, though. Throughout and, the game. So, what, what did you feel you have to improve on defensively from game one? Um, basically, what we got to improve on is, is making less mistakes. Okay. Because uh, the defense looked pretty good. Chris, like I say, gave up only uh, those eight points. And uh, towards the end, very questionable calls from the referee. So you have to be pretty happy with your defense. Yeah, I'm always pretty happy with the defense. We just we, it's little mistakes that we make that we got to make sure that we correct for this game. Now let's talk about the guy right here to the right of you. Uh, how has he been an impact for you? Uh, basically, since Buck got here for the, for the from the beginning, man, he's just been doing his thing. So we're, we're just glad to have him a part of the family. Um, we're gonna keep moving with him, and he, he's, we got some big things coming from him. This season that you didn't see last season, so watch out. Buck, talk to me. Tell me what, what what's your goal for this season? Well, my goal, man, my goal really is to win this championship this season. Man. Okay. Uh, get in where I fit in, man. I'm playing all over the field wherever Coach needs me, at, man. That's what I'm gonna play. And what do you think the Cardinals need to do to overcome some of the losses in the playoffs that they have over the past few years? Well, basically, just communication, man. Just good communication, man. Talk to each other uh, and go out there and do what we have to do, man. Real quick, talk to me about team respect. How big is that? That's that's very important, man. Team respect, man. Honoring each person on your team, man. Learning how to talk to people the right way, man. It's very important. It's very key, man. And talk about discipline. Discipline is, is very key also. Man. Why? Why is discipline you, you so important? You got to have discipline, man, because if you don't have discipline, man, it's just like, it's just like coaching a team of third graders. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have this. We men, we got to play like men, you know what I'm saying, not like kids. Okay, okay. Real quick, Coach, I want you to chime in on that real quick. Why is team respect so important? Yeah, coach. You say coach, right? Yeah, yeah. You. I'm not a coach. I'm okay, a okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my bad. You're a, coach on, you're a coach on the field, man. You're a coach on the field. Why, why is team respect so important? It's so important so, you know, everybody get their respect, you know, from one another and, you know, encourage them to keep going, playing, playing real hard. Okay. Okay, so how, how important are you on the field when your team, when somebody on your, your team is slacking? What, as an as a, as a important player, what do you do to get their spirits and everything? Back? Last year, I ain't do too much talking. Okay. This year, I'm going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to get on their butts out there on the field. They slack. Well, why is communication so important to you? Because they, that's how we get the blocks down. Okay. If we see something, you know, in front of us, we should, you know, have a little signal call and Go with that. Okay. So the running back to have no enough room to make that touchdown. Well, let's go right here to you, Coach Ray. We on we on team respect. Why do you demand respect from your players? Well, Jay, like a big, a big part of this is that I'm I'm 28. Okay. This guy is 40 something. This guy may be looking at 40 something. Okay. A lot of times. Why you gonna call the age out on <laughs> camera, man? I'm, well, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> a lot of times <laughs> coming come, come in, coming into the situation. You know, they're like, well, this youngster, this and that, this, that, and the other. But it's, it's not even like that. Okay. Uh, for us, it's, it's coach-player relationship. Um, when, I, when I first got here, you know, I had to get used to the guys and get to know them a little bit and treat, how to treat some certain ways and how to, you know, do this and that and the other. But they respect me for two things. Okay. They know I'm going to come to practice, and they know I'm all about the team. So it's very important. If you don't, if you don't respect the guy you're playing next to, I mean, what what point is it even to block for that guy or throw the ball to that guy if you don't respect him? Chris, could it be a distraction if the respect is not there? Yes, it, it's it's big. Distractions are big, man. You you have you have guys on the football team that are not always team players. Okay. So uh, one thing that we try to do in this organization is build respect amongst each other. Okay. We're all grown men, eighteen and over, to even play on this football team. So okay. So if you don't have respect for the guy playing next to you. How can you win a championship? Right. You can't. You know, so we're, we're just big on, on trying to build this thing as a team. So we don't just call it a team. We call it a family. Okay. And you talk about that all the time, Chris. Family, family. And in family, respect is a structure. 
and a part of every every family. Yeah, Buck, it, it, tell me real quick, but before we come back to Chris, mm -hmm. why Houston Cardinals? Why no other team? <laughs> oh man, well man, I'm gonna put it like this: I I haven't touched a football. I had put equipment on in 20 years okay. until last year. Okay. I just had a desire to play football, and I don't want to turn it into a spiritual thing, but this is kind of where God led me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, a lot of players say that. Yeah, that's where God led me to. And my life, I don't, it's not just by happenstance. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't think nothing just happens. Everything is for a reason. Okay. And that's one of my, one of my reasons for being here on this team. And that's, that's as a spiritual leader on this team also. Okay. Okay. You know, and like I said, like you said, a lot of guys there, they are younger. We are the elders. Some of the, uh, one of the, a couple of the elders on the team. I'm 37. Okay. Be 38 this year, man. And I know I've experienced a lot in my life, and I know that I can bring a lot to the team as far as leadership is concerned. Okay, and that's important. You know, yes, indeed. Talk about Chris as a coach. <laughs> this guy, man, he, he, he's really been a blessing in my life. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much he knows it, you know. The things that, that he's been through, um, you know, I don't say a lot. He always, always says that I don't say a lot, but just his lifestyle. Uh, the way he is, his drive in life, it, it motivates me. Okay. Even off the field, you know what I'm saying? Not only on the field, but off the field in my personal life. Okay. You know, endeavors that I want to pursue, his drive, everything he has under his belt, in his hands, man, he, he don't quit, you know? And when you look across the field and you see Terry playing, what, what do you see in him? This, man, <laughs> like he said, 40 some years old, don't right. want to give up. Mom be trying to tell him, she tried to tell him last year, boy, you need to sit down. <laughs> He won't quit. He, he got a drive. He keeps coming. He got a heck of a drive, man. And I love that. And you and you can't teach that. That's exactly. sure he has a big heart, and that's something exactly. that you can't teach in football. How important to you is heart? Man, heart is very important. I figure, I mean, if your heart ain't in it, you're not going to give your all. Okay. If your heart ain't, if your heart is not, in, if your heart is not for the team, somebody that may make you mad. Right. You you're not going to go all out for them. Okay. You may hold a grudge. You know what I'm saying? And it, it ain't just about heart. It's about about love, about real love. Learn okay. how to love through everything, man. Gotcha. gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Terry. Yes, sir. Where does your heart come from? My heart comes from my mother and my grandmother. Okay. They know my because you won't give up. You're still, you're still at it, like I'm you say. Still at it. And you want I, that I, ring. I, still, I love this game, man. When the Cardinals get the championship ring this year, would you call it quits? Nope. I'm still going to go. Still I, going. I, I you want another Chris, one? I told Chris last year, I'm give it five years. Okay. I'm give it the five years. This is my second year. I got three more years. Okay. And before I retire, I want four rings. <laughs> Whoa. And you know, you can get them. Yeah. You can get them as long as the team has the yeah. discipline and respect. Well, and they... I first started playing semi-pro back in with 90 with the Gladiators. Okay. You know, and that team was just, we played three games. That team was, you know, you know too many youngsters. Right. No discipline. Yeah. So I sat down for a couple of years. Then one of the players we had last year, I ain't going to say my name. He played somewhere else. I came out here. You know, I looked on the field. I seen Chris out there. You know, he was gone. You know. I say, I told my wife, I said, I think I'm going to play again. Right. And she looked at me all crazy. <laughs> she said, you can't handle that. I say, girl, please. And she supports you. How big is that? Oh, how, big how big is your wife support to you? Oh, man, it's wonderful. I love it. And, and tell the world why is it so important to have your wife support you? Love. Okay. Love. She loves me. I love her. And I know she won't come in the camera. No, she don't want. She don't want. She want to say something. But just to just to know that she has your back, yeah. that that means you can go that extra mile. Yes, sir. And Chris, we talk about family. Why are you so Why are you so demanding that these guys love their family? Well, the first first of all, the only thing that we have in life is our first and last name. That's the only thing that we own, Junior. Okay. And with us that's that's pretty good. I've never heard of it like that. The only thing that we own. That's you know, I mean, everything when we when we're dead and gone, man, we leave everything. Okay. This shirt that I have on, this organization, it's going to be left on this earth. Okay. But I'm going to die, and when I die, my headstone is going to say Chris Boykins. And it's going to say the day that I was born right. and, and the, the day, day that, that you I left. die. Okay. So in between that period, I have to make a statement that God has given me a gift to do. Okay. And the statement that I'm trying to make is when I leave this earth, that hey, I went out that went out of my way to help people get from one point to another. Okay. So when I say family, man, my youth foundation is the Boykins Youth Foundation. Okay. It has my last name. So when I leave this earth, guess what? People are gonna remember that. Why? Because there's gonna be so many people that have been